Then finally, before this pair of surahs came, this is of course very intricately connected surah, Surah Al-Shams and Surah Al-Layl. Before them we read Surah Al-Balad. And in Surah Al-Balad, if you remember, there was mention of going up a mountain, right? وَهَدَيْنَهُ الْنَجْدَيْنِ فَلَقْتَحَمَا الْعَقَبَ And we talked about how the righteous path is very difficult. It's very high and very difficult. But Allah Azza wa Jal seeks to change our attitude about that difficulty. So when He talks about the one doing good deeds, which apparently sounds difficult, what does Allah Azza wa Jal say? فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى we'll, we'll facilitate for him the easiest thing. Meaning Allah calls that high hill, when you take that journey, Allah will Himself would make sure that becomes the easiest thing for you. That there is nothing easier than that. And the one who takes the wrong journey, Allah Azza wa Jal make the, the toughest, the hardest thing easy for him. The hardest thing will become easy for him. And we'll look at a description of those, those words inshaAllah ta'ala when we get to the ayat themselves. Then finally I want to share with you this imagery that Allah establishes of the righteous going, shh, girls. The righteous going elevating themselves. The righteous elevating themselves. And the, 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 the wretched putting themselves down. The wretched thinks the more wealth he has, the higher he gets in society. That's what he thinks. The more wealth he has, the higher he is in society. And Allah is telling the righteous to spend. أَعْطَى يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ Right? And in the, even in Surah Al-Badr we found what categories of people to give. Right? فَكُّ رَقَبَةٍ أَوْ إِطْعَامٌ فِي يَوْمٍ ذِي مَسْغَبَةٍ etc. etc. So this idea of giving. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the one who gives is actually the one getting high. Because he's going up the hill. And the one who acquires wealth, thinking that he's become high, what words are used for him? Dasaha, put in the dust. Taradda, you know, falling into a ditch, falling down into a cliff. He's actually lowering himself, where actually he thinks he is elevating himself. Subhanallah. So there's this contrast being mentioned between the righteous who put themselves down before Allah, because Allah is the most high. إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى Allah being the most high, they put themselves down, and Allah is elevating them. But the one who put themselves high, Allah is putting them down. So there's this beautiful contrast that is described in between these two surahs. So these were some parallels between the previous surah and this one. And he says, إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا لَلْهُدَى وَإِنَّ لَنَا لَلْآخِرَةَ وَالْأُولَى Meaning these two people are working in their own directions. But they should know guidance is his possession. It is upon him to guide. And we'll talk about that in more detail today inshaAllah after the salah. And the other, the other thing that Allah mentions is that he is in complete ownership of both of them. He knows exactly what they're doing and he's in complete control. Because he himself is the true owner, not only of the hereafter, but what's going on here also. You know, the believer who does good things expects rewards in the hereafter. They expect, even when they get depressed, what do you tell them? Allah will give you more in the hereafter. And the disbeliever, when he does vicious things, even if you warn him of the hereafter, he says, well, it's not happening now, is it? It's not so bad now, I can do whatever I want now. So they attribute Allah's role both in some way to the hereafter. But Allah Azza wa Jalla lets them know not just Al-Akhirah, well, Ula, right here too. Right here Allah is in control also. Allah knows exactly what you're going through here, what you're up to here. And the consequences will be here as well as over there. إِنَّ لَنَا لَلْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَى